my problem is when I lose respect for somebody, it's done, it's over, it is kaput, done, done. They can do whatever they want to me. I don't care, but I'm going to rail on them because, well, frankly, I lose respect. And that's what I do. Not proud of it. Not my best quality. Probably didn't have it until I started hanging around Bob Knight. But, hey, can't blame anybody but yourself. And one of my biggest, well, targets, I guess you could say, is Greg Doyle, the columnist for the Indy Star. When I found out what Greg Doyle was really about, we were no longer going to be friends. Acquaintances, yes. Backstory, I was going to let Doyle stay at my house. I was divorced. I had a nice house. But then I realized what he was doing with young married women. Young married women who had just had kids are very vulnerable, and Doyle played on that. Including one of the women you see on TV many, many times. I hesitate to say her name because, well, she's such a creep like Doyle. They kind of deserve each other. But anyway, I said, hey, look, you can't stay at my house because I have a young daughter staying at my house. Did I think Doyle was going to creep around my young daughter? Not really. Not really, but I wasn't putting my daughter in that situation. It wasn't going to happen. Now, that didn't cause a real problem between Doyle and I. What caused a problem between Doyle and I is professional. I said his writing, his pandering, and that of the Indy Star sucked. They pandered. They hated unnecessarily. Of course, they got mad. Doyle then wrote this hit piece on me, and I've responded whenever I can. It's just the way I work. But I'm not surprised even a little bit. Of the latest. Now, this is according to Bob Kravitz, who had Doyle's job at the Indy Star. He was the columnist. I didn't even know Kravitz was still alive. Kravitz was the afternoon host on a radio station where I was the noon to three guy, and he was so bad at his job, you, I don't know, he's probably the only host in America that got fired. Now, he went over to Channel 13, made a big deal to make sure everybody knew it wasn't because he was a creeper. Okay, whatever. Got fired from there, ended up at The Athletic, got fired from there. But Kravitz does have sources at the Indy Star, and those sources told him that Greg Doyle had been suspended. Now, understand this. Doyle, the columnist, is very, very active on Twitter. Like, And it, to his credit... He writes a zillion stories on a lot of different things. His stories individually on people are interesting. His stories on teams are idiotic because he knows nothing about sports, has no sense of what the sporting world is actually about. All of a sudden, after the whole Caitlin Clark thing, Doyle went dark. No tweets, no stories. At a time in Indianapolis where, let's be honest, it's the biggest time for the Pacers. It's a massive time for the fever with Caitlin Clark coming in. And it's all because of this. Doyle went silent. Kravitz started investigating why the silence, and he found out, this is according to Kravitz, that Doyle had been suspended for two weeks by the Indy Star, maybe, I guess. But he was also, there's a restraining order, not a literal restraining order, but I've never heard this before. A writer, a male writer, is not allowed to cover a female team. So Doyle is not allowed to cover the Indiana Fever, which is going to be the biggest story of the summer in Indy and maybe the Midwest, non-baseball division. Why? Because of this exchange between Doyle the Creeper and Caitlin Clark going back a few weeks. Hi, Hi. Caitlin. Uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, let me do this. You like you like that? I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, well, let's cool. start doing it to me, and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question is. So you got to understand, Doyle feels like he, well, you can tell, he's bigger than everybody. We'll get along just fine. Do that to me. Give me the heart sign, because I'm a perverted old man. And Doyle then tried to have Candace Buckner, who is a writer for the Washington Post, I guess. She used to be a writer here in Indianapolis working with Doyle. Doyle tried to date her. Candace Buckner and her family, being the apparently racist that they are, told Doyle they can't date because he's white. Doyle told me that. I am the first person source on that. He called me all distraught one Sunday about that. Now, I wouldn't give out any of these details, 
And I'm not giving them out because Doyle wrote a hit piece on me. I'm giving them out because Doyle, in that hit piece, made his uh, made his illicit affairs with women obvious. He was trying to get ahead of the story about his many affairs. So once you put that out, hey, screw it. We'll get into who Doyle really is and Candace Buckner really is. So Doyle made a play. Doyle made a play to get his ex-girlfriend, Candace Buckner, write an op-ed in the Washington Post. Nobody paid attention to it. This idiot Buckner, who is just a clown, she tries to make the story about herself. She wears gaudy hats to game. She's a bad writer. She's really just a dumb person. But anyway, you know, DEI and all, she gets these jobs. She's a basketball writer, supposedly a basketball aficionado. It falls flat because, let's be honest, Doyle's girlfriend writing an article about Doyle doesn't really cut it. Okay. Fast forward to yesterday. Bob Kravitz decides, hey, wait a second. I got to find out what in the hell's going on around here because Doyle has not tweeted. Doyle has not posted anything, not written an article. Turns out, according to Kravitz, the star has suspended him. Turns out, according to Kravitz, the star or the WNBA or the Fever or maybe Caitlin Clark's dad, hell, I don't know, because of that exchange, banned him from games. Now, I've never heard of this. I've never in my life heard of this. He's reportedly barred from covering any of Clark's games live. He can do it from his couch where maybe he has Jurgens and a soft towel because he's a weirdo. He can't do it from the games. Now, what does that mean? Well, what that means, I don't know. Does it mean he can go do interviews pre- and post-game? Does it mean he's got a restraining order? What, like the crazy ex-husband and he can't be 500 feet from the building. What's really interesting about this is those that defend Doyle, that's fine. And I think Clay did. And that's great. I get it. There's two sides. And maybe everybody's overreacting here. I don't know. But what's interesting to me is Caitlin Clark has never squelched this. Not one time. Caitlin Clark could have come out the next day and said, yeah, it's just funny guy being weird. But everybody knows about this creeper. Think about this. The Indy Star has such bad people running it such ridiculous human beings running it, that their star reporter, the guy who said publicly to me, I'm the only reason people read this. If I go, the star goes. That's Doyle's direct quote to me. He's so creepy that you can't have him around a women's basketball team, yet that's not enough to be fired. What's enough to be fired? If that ain't enough to be fired, you tell me, What is enough to be fired? That's where we're at here in Indy. you got to understand the Indy star. Now, 10 years ago, or however many years ago, they used to be the best. Mark Alicia, Tim Evans, Maria Kwiatkowski, they broke the story of Larry Nassar and all of his abuse with not only, well, they broke it for USA Olympics, Uh, USA Gymnastics, and then others picked up the story, and it led to Michigan State and everything else. But that's how good this paper was. And then this paper got rid of Alicia. Kwiatkowski saw the writing on the wall and left. Evans was moved into administrative role, and you're left with this creep Doyle. That's what you're left with. And you're left with people in Biz, excuse me, in power positions that are okay with having their star reporter be such a creeper that he's not allowed to go to women's games. Now, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out because this is a monumental embarrassment. Doyle posted this yesterday after not posting for five days. Doyle's going to try to make light. So he's showing a boxing match where he got knocked through the ropes. This was from, oh, I don't know, about four weeks ago. But he's trying to make it out like he's been busy doing this. Doyle also lied to his little text group, allegedly, where he said, hey, look, uh, I had this trip planned with my kids, my family, tough timing, but I'm leaving. Plans have been made. Now, whether that's true or not, sure doesn't seem to be. Am I gloating? Yeah, probably. Am I a bad human being? Yeah, probably. I am. I got to tell you, that's who I am. God, you made me. You did this. You made me a little vindictive, but it's sad for all involved. It really is. And it just shows, once again, media can't handle themselves. Media can never handle They get a little popular, and next thing you know, you're the guy that has to tell the new athlete, you'll be okay if you make a heart sign to me. Honest to God. 
It's just the way things are. You know, I'm tired of athletes acting like jackasses. <laughs> Wasted. What is that? Athletes acting like jackasses. And next thing you know, they blame the fans. You know, we've seen this way too much, right? We saw it in BYU. Oh, man, some volleyball player made it up, allegedly, that the fans at BYU called her a racist slur. The coach at Norfolk State, some guy named Jones, after a game against Illinois State, made up that the fans called one of his players a racist slur. Now, all of a sudden, Patrick Beverly, who threw a basketball at a fan because the fan, and this is documented, uh, made fun of his team, the Milwaukee Bucks, when they were in the huddle. One, two, three. The fan said, Cancun on three. Well, Patrick Beverly is now saying that, well, that fan said awful things to me. Really? Let's hear from this idiot, Patrick Beverly. What happened at the end of the Bucks game? Unfortunate situation. That should have never happened. What I did was bad. Bad. And that should have never happened. I have to be better, and I will be better. That's That should have never happened. Regardless of what was said, that should have never happened. Simple as that. Let's just say it was more than Cancun on three. Okay, so that report from Shams was just a fraction of the story. I just say it was more than that. I've been called a lot of stuff in this in this league. I haven't been called that one. Still unexcused, but it doesn't matter what was said. I have to be better, and I will be better. I'm not going to take away from the fans that were great. It was some people that, that took it a little bit too far. I'm here to set the record straight. I was absolutely wrong, and I need to be better, and I will. I'm not the guy to get fans kicked out, neither. The things that were said to me, I could have got four or five fans kicked out. Literally, security walked up to me. You want to get that fan thrown out? Oh, nah, man. You could say anything when you win it. That's what happens when you win. You could literally say anything. And some people would have said, Pat, man, you should have got him kicked out. That would have never happened. I'm not I'm not getting no fans kicked out. People who spend money to watch us play, I'm not getting them kicked out. We in layup line. I'm on the bench with the ball. Fan to the right of me. Say something crazy. I get up to him. I man, you, you can boo me. You can, but don't call me that. I go shake Rick Carlisle hand. Fans say something crazy to me. I'm looking like, man, like you can say anything. Just don't be disrespectful. He apologized too. Everyone who stepped out of line and said something like too crazy, all of them apologized. It was just some people who, you know, just crossed the line a little bit. Can't throw basketballs at people. No, will not. Will never happen again. Never. I ain't bring the basketball on the bench no more, man. Yeah, 90% of that's really good, but you know what he's trying to do. I mean, look, nobody said nothing. I know the people around the area, nobody said nothing crazy. I mean, if, it, and again, it, it, what he said, great. Yeah, you're out, go fight, win. But it's just bullshit. I'm not swearing no more. It's Bolshevik. That's right. I'm, sure being, I'm swearing in foreign languages now. Yeah, it's complete crazy. That's what you do, right? Oh, man, they said something crazy. What did they say? Oh, man, just crazy. Oh, okay. All right. You really? I mean, when in doubt, when you act like a jerk, make sure you blame somebody said something crazy. What is crazy? I mean, I've had crazy things said to me. I have. And I've said crazy things to people. Never racist, never sexist. I remember I told one fat rich guy, ah, never mind. I'm not even going to get into it because I'm not going to swear. But anyway, it's just another example of the crap. Look, uh, athletes, you got a defense. Here it is. You ready? He said something crazy to me. They were racist to me. Okay. Yeah, like rich dudes sitting in the third row are going to yell out racist rants in this day and age or any day and age. Okay. Now, back in the 50s, I have no idea. I wasn't there. But that's just total crap. And I don't care. Patrick Beverly, I'm never doing it again. I'm not one to get people thrown out. Hey, that's all great. No, that's awesome. <laughs> but all of a sudden, yeah, man, it's the fans' fault. It's always somebody said something crazy. Somebody said something racist. I've gotten to the point where I just don't believe it. I just don't. I mean, look, uh, people overreact. You see Smollett, the BYU thing. It's just so ridiculous. You know what? You owned up to it. Great. But don't pin it on anybody but yourself. Man, they said something crazy. Everybody apologized. He's lying about that. Everybody didn't apologize. No. 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 Hey, man, I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay. Really? As you're walking off the court. Yeah, okay. Man, these NBA guys. I, I saw yesterday, I think it was uh, – Austin Rivers said you could take 20 NBA guys and put them in an N in the NFL. You can't take one, not a single NBA guy, not one, and put them in the NFL that would last more than three days in training camp. Not one. Zero. They'd either get cut, fined, or fired 
because, one, they showed up late. Two, they showed up entitled. Three, the workload was too tough. Not one. Zero. Zip. And you heard it right there. Oh, man, they said something crazy. Oh, shut up. Just shut up. Uh, he was a jackass the entire series. I don't even care about on the court. You know, he asked a woman, oh, you get my podcast, I can't talk to you. Oh, shut up. Just shut up. And now people, after throwing a ball at a fan, they were talking crazy. All right, what is crazy? Patrick Beverly, you suck. Oh, man, that's crazy. Ridiculous. i tell you what's ridiculous. This dude is a nuisance. This dude, Rasheed Rice, is an absolute nuisance. I mean a nuisance. Man, I mean to tell you, when I say a nuisance, I mean a dangerous nuisance. Now, you got to remember, Rasheed Rice is the guy that was going like 120 miles an hour down the highway in a rented Lamborghini and got lost control, ran into people, hurt eight of them, and walked away like I'm Rasheed Rice. He's under about four felony charges. I think that's what it is. Now, it's been reported that Rasheed Rice is under investigation from something that happened last Friday, a nightclub assault in Dallas, Dallas police say. They're investigating and interviewing witness about an incident that happened. Apparently there was a punch thrown at a photographer. The photographer got injured. It escalated. So you're talking about a guy that decided to go a billion miles an hour in a Lamborghini, down a highway, couldn't handle the car, crashed, hurt a bunch of people, walked away, walked away so arrogantly and ridiculously with his boys while people are like, hey, dummy, you can't walk away. He was not smart enough to not put himself in a position where he would have trouble. Like, if you're dumb enough to go in a Lamborghini And crush people. Walk away. It's the biggest story in the NFL. Why don't you take a few weeks off? Why don't you just take a few weeks off from the club, the strip joint? Why don't you just stay at home? Hit the local bar if you got to go out drinking. Stay by the pool. Give yourself a little leeway from doing the next stupid thing. Because if you're dumb enough, Rasheed Rice, to not understand that people are going to try to provoke you, talk about you, whatever, then you're too dumb to go out because that's automatic. Somebody's going to recognize, hey, man, that's Rasheed Rice over there, then it goes to another, and then there's going to be trouble. And again, if you don't understand that, then I can't help you. Nobody can help you. I guess maybe because you're a talented wide receiver, the Chiefs and maybe the police in Kansas City are going to try to help you. But I don't think that's where that one trial is. And ah, this is in Dallas. I don't know that that's going to work out great for you. Damn, people are stupid. Look, right now, I'm really stupid. So I know stupid. I got an expired license plate because we forgot to send the eight nine hundred dollars that it costs to get license plates here in Indiana. A friend of mine noticed it the other day. Hey, dummy, you're driving with an expired. That's stupid. All right. So what am I doing? I'm trying not to drive so much. I'm telling my wife, hey, look, you got an expired plate too. Don't drive so much. And if you do, make sure somebody's behind you that isn't a cop that might block the cop. Hopefully, it comes today. We've paid. So hopefully, once we saw the situation, we rectified it. But damn. Dumb. When it's dumb, try to avoid more dumb. Not put yourself in a position of more dumb. I I can save America if you'll just let me. You know, Brittany Griner is a very polarizing figure. Brittany Griner has been perceived as anti-American. I don't view Brittany Griner that way. I, I never did. Look, I viewed everybody that knelt for the anthem after Kaepernick as opportunists. They saw that cap money, yo. They saw Kaepernick become, well, kind of a messiah figure, right? He had the hair, the beard. He became a dude that, you know, he's a prophet. The prophet Kaepernick. The prophet Colin goes up there with the prophet Isaiah. I, I viewed him. 
Well, frankly, I viewed him as opportunist. But a couple things with Brittany Griner. One, she hits back at being labeled anti-American. Despite her previous refusal to stand for the anthem and be out there for the anthem. They took me to the airport, she said, after driving me around the Kremlin, and they were like, do you know who lives here? And I was just like, yeah, I know. They were like, our leader lives here. And I'm like, Jesus, get me out of this brainwashed car. When we went to the, this is the part where she thinks it's going to be shot down. When we get to the airport, I get on that plane, I was worried someone might shoot the plane down. It wouldn't be the first time. Really? When's the last time your plane was shot down? I knew I wouldn't feel safe until wheels were on the U.S. soil. Now, I don't blame her for that. I don't blame her for feeling that way, but you got to understand something. There's nobody other than woke America that gives a rat's you-know-what about Brittany Griner. Now, woke America does because she's a black LGBT lesbian basketball player. So woke America does. But I got to tell you, Biden gave in, the merchant of death or the worst human being alive got traded for this women's lesbian basketball player, the Kremlin or wherever didn't give a rat's ass about some, uh, what, uh, about, what was I going to say? About some nondescript basketball player. They cared about the mass murdering dude. They cared about getting their guy back. Like a real dude. So why shoot? Why even care about Brittany Griner's plane? Biden, in all of his stupidity, wasn't smart enough to make a decent deal. Get both he and the former, well, the current soldier that's been standing or sitting in jail far longer than Griner. Biden gave in. And you think Putin and those clowns gave a damn about Brittany Griner? No. You think anybody in the United States gives a damn about Brittany Griner other than her family, other than woke America's LGBTQ community? And Brittany Griner's like, you know, everybody else. Nobody really cares. So her self-awareness here, while I understand it, man, you ain't that important, sister. Certainly you're not that important once Biden made the ridiculous deal to get one of the most dangerous criminals in the world out of our jail and back in the hands of Russia. But I don't blame her. She says, the weirdest thing for me, and I don't know why this would be considered weird if you have any brain at all, maybe Brittany Griner doesn't, was being labeled anti-American or non-American. Well, I mean, let me straighten it out for you. When you kneel and you don't want to, and you want to disrespect the flag, it shouldn't be that weird. Now, I get it. People like Griner are stupid. So they say things like, well, the weirdest thing, no. It's not that weird. I mean, look, if you had any kind of pulse on the world, on America, people that were going in, not standing for the flag, were going to be considered anti-American. That one kind of irritates me the most, honestly, because my dad was a legit Marine. What's a non-legit Marine? Vietnam, 68 to 69. He fought for our country, went into law enforcement for 30-plus years. That I would understand. I wish Brittany Griner had let people know this before. I wish, for her sake, I don't care. doesn't matter to me. In fact, I was one of the first people to call for Brittany Griner to be released once I realized she was still in there. I don't give a damn what the public perception is of Brittany Griner, but for her sake, you know, she kind of, sort of, should have made it more public. When she was kneeling or walking out on the flag or whatever she was doing, it would have been nice for her to have made this public. Look, My father was a Vietnam vet. Maybe, just maybe, part of Brittany Griner's anti-American stance, if that's what you want to call it, stems from the way Vietnam vets were treated when they came back from war. They were booed at the airport, hissed, things thrown at them. They were disrespected. Maybe that's where Brittany Griner's stance comes from. Maybe not, but maybe. It would have behooved her to have let the world know this while people were calling her anti or un-American. When everyone asked me, what would you do if you weren't in basketball, I would have probably been a cop. My life would have been very different. And because I've protested against police brutality and all of this, I'm labeled as un-American. 
Yeah, you were. I don't buy the whole cop thing. Like, people can say anything they want. You know, it's like Larry Brown, the legendary basketball coach. You know, when I'm done coaching, I just want to teach at a small, small high school because I just love basketball. Yeah, okay. All right. You know, ever since Larry Brown said that, I've paid attention to what I would be if I wasn't. Yeah, maybe Brittany Griner would have. Yeah, I don't know. But it's the easiest thing to say, you know, if I had hair, I would be a Hollywood movie star. If I had a full head of feathered back 1978, Dan Dockage, beautiful do, I would be in Hollywood right now. That's right. People can say anything. I'm with you, Brittany Griner. I am. I don't think you're anti-American. I actually don't think about you. But you're doing a, you know, a publicity tour for a book. I hope the book sells for you. I hope, because when I see Brittany Griner, I see a bunch of insecurity. I do. I just see someone who's different than everybody else because of her size and all the other stuff. And I see insecurity, so I kind of root for her. I'm actually the one that started, hey, Brittany, get her ass out of prison. But anyway, if you didn't understand being labeled anti-American during that particular period of time, eh, that's on you. But honest to goodness, if your dad was treated poorly, and since your dad was a vet and a 30-year cop, you kind of sort of maybe should have told folks that. Maybe you did and people just didn't listen. And I wouldn't blame them for not listening. We don't have to listen to everything. I mean, just because some freaking woman athlete or men athlete talk doesn't mean we got to listen. Like, I prefer if they didn't talk. I prefer not having to hear Patrick Beverly all of a sudden claim something crazy. I prefer not to have Brittany Griner tell me anything. I don't care about them. I, You know, you get to a certain age, it's your kids, it's your boss, it's your, you know, people that you work with, it's your family that you listen to. You don't listen to care about athletes. Now, I get it when you're younger, maybe you do. But honest to God, it would have been nice. And, hey, look, Brittany, I hope you sell a lot of books. I hope a lot of things go your way. I kind of like Brittany Griner. I do. I'm not mad at her. You know what? She learned a lesson. I had a friend that went to jail in Germany. It was a illegal gene scam gone wrong, and he was in jail, kind of a cement jail, with a couple of skinheads, or maybe one. At the time, skinheads were considered very dangerous. He got out, got home. I think he kissed the soil. I think he was very happy. Most people that experience other countries on a serious level, not on a vacation level, learn to maybe appreciate the good old United States a little more. It's a lesson for you Columbia pukes, you IU pukes, all of you anti-Semites out there protesting against Israel. Go over. Go over to Hamas. Go over to the Gaza Strip. Tell them you're gay. Tell them you're trans. See how that works out for you. Tell them you're a woman that likes to stoop a lot of different people. See how that works out for you. Just take a look. Go over there, you little white fraternity boys, and see how it works out for you. Although I like the fraternity boys now because they stood up and saved the flag. Never mind. Go over. See how that works. You'll respect the United States. That's something that my parents put in me. Respect the flag. Respect the country. and Understand the opportunities you have for living in this great nation. Yeah, I know we're supposed to say it's got flaws, and one of the flaws is in the White House. But, hey, pretty good place to live. But I still don't want to pay taxes. No, I don't. First time ever, I've never wanted to pay taxes. We cover a lot of ground in a Brittany Griner story, don't we? Yeah, I don't want to pay taxes. Hey, uh, more athletes are speaking out in light of the wildly outrageous roast of Tom Brady the other night on Netflix. Uh They're all in agreement. PC culture is officially over. David Bakhtiari is not an actor. David Bakhtiari is the left tackle, longtime left tackle for Aaron Rodgers. Here's what he had to say. What did he have to say? Where is David Bakhtiari? Hey, guys, just watch the roast again. You watched that for three hours? I can confidently say Tom Brady has killed PC culture. He is our Jesus Christ. No, he's not. He pretty much socially sacrificed himself on Netflix Live for three hours while the world watched. He is a blank, blank hero. We are healed. It's marvelous. Yeah, that's a little extreme. But I will say this. I will say that Tom Brady, man, is he a turd, huh? Honest to God, let me look at the list here. I wrote it down. So he cheated in football, cheated on his 
fiance while she was pregnant, cheated on his ex-wife, cheated on his children, some in the womb and others, uh, lost $30 million and cost a lot of other people to lose a ton of money in crypto, and took out illegal PPE loans, and here he is a hero. Just a rotten human being. Holy cow. Woo. Anyway, our friend Sean Merriman, I give, big, I give nothing but big ups and a tremendous amount of respect to Netflix because in today's society where everyone is so censored, for them to clear this, let this happen live, I think they broke the mold on censorship. I think they broke the mold on what's okay now. It's okay for comedy. It's okay to crack jokes. I mean, there was everything in there. Rakes jokes, gender jokes. It's like, man, let's get back to that, where comedy is comedy, and it's okay. No one was offended. It was a great time. It was the best roast I think I've ever seen in my life. Well, wait a sec. <clears throat> You've never seen Drunken Foster Brooks roast Dean Martin in the Dean Martin roast, Sean Merriman. No, you're right, though. He is right. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody was really offended. I guess Giselle was offended. And a, we- and a weird thing today, Ron Harper, five-time Bulls NBA champ, came at me. He said, relax, you did it too, meaning get divorced. Then he said, I, Dan Donkich, should be banned from games of the fever. Weird world we're living in. <clears throat> Ron Harper, who kicked my butt, one time, and then I kicked his the next time when I was a senior. Anyway, when we were in college, Ron Harper went on to a great career. All right. But I tell you what, I had to straighten him out because English is not his forte. And you know what? When English, I, my mother, is a teacher. She's still a teacher. She told me the other day that I speak bad. I speak bad English. (laughs) I told her sometimes I do it, well, on purpose. But anyway... So Ron Harper said Dan Dockage should be banned for for going to Fever Games 2. I said, Ron, let me help you. It's should be banned from going to Fever Games as well. Sometimes athletes are really stupid. But anyway, sometimes athletes are right. And in this case, Ron Harper wrong. David Bakhtiari, Sean Marion Wright. Let's get back to where it's just comedy. Let's get back to where everybody doesn't go, well, you know, uh, this white guy. Let's get back to where it's not just African Americans that can make fun of white people, but white people can make fun of folks as well. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. 350 million people here in this country We're going to have differences of opinion. Some are going to get offended. But as I always say, this is a baby. Doctor smacks the baby on the dupayash. The baby cries, right? First thing you do when you're a baby is cry. The doctor doesn't say, hey, kid, you'll never cry again. You'll never be offended again. No. We get you used to crying. They get you used to crying because it's going to happen more. Giselle's offended. Good. Hey, Giselle, you're offended? By the Tom Brady roast as the former wife? How about don't cheat on your husband and go stand over there and be offended? Aaron Hernandez is baby mama. Hey, Aaron Hernandez, baby mama, you're offended? How about not spreading your legs for a mass murderer? Interesting thought. Crazy thought. How about keeping your knees together and, you know, maybe having some dignity in your life? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Good. Go over there and be offended. Everybody that's offended, go over there and be offended. Now, that doesn't mean people can just blatantly, you know, fire racial slurs at people on the street. But it does mean, get back to comedy. Dave Chappelle, you do you. I like Dave Chappelle. Hey, I like Tommy Lyron, too. I do. I think Tommy's a cool lady. I had a chance to meet her a couple times. And I'm glad she's a talented lady, too. She's a fierce lady. She's not afraid lady. She's perfect. She's the face, other than Clay Travis, of OutKick. And she should be. Tommy Lahren, now, her show Tommy Lahren is Fearless, will be on five days a week. That's right. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Five days a week. 
Uh, the programs are going to drop daily at 1 p.m. Eastern time. You'll be able to stream all of Tommy's shows from the Outkick website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Fox Nation app. Be sure to catch Tommy, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five days a week right here.